hearing anything about what the student understands about computation here. We're just measuring whether the student can see the numbers lined up. Yes? Well, that seems pretty good at math, but mm -hmm. he prefers to do it in his head and not. I tried to, does line up this problem to do this if he wants to do it in his head? Yeah. Or if that's common? Yeah, uh, oh, um, it, it's incredibly common. Uh, I, I have never, I rarely find a student who loves to show work, but of course, <laughs> the trouble with doing it in your head is that you will hit this wall, and then you don't have, you know, you don't have the system or the experience laying out, you know, math. And really, um, <clears throat> really, <coughs> Uh, you need to be able to show, you know, steps and problem solving and things like that. Because it will, how old is your son? Eight. Yeah, what, eight. Well, oh, to be eight. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you just have to, ta you, you know, impress upon him that things are going to get harder and you know that and you're going to save him a world of hurt by teaching him how to, you know, making sure that he shows his work <laughs> in math. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Okay, so again, here, I'm going to have to turn the lights down. Um, so here's, here's, a little, here's a little visual spatial kind of quiz. Okay, what would you call that? What does that look like to you? A rabbit. Does it look like anything else to anybody? A duck. Hmm? A duck. A duck. Uh huh. <coughs> Bird, duck. Okay, and yet a rabbit. Do a rabbit and a duck look alike? No. Not really. Um, all right, let's try this. <coughs> Now what does that look like? A rabbit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a rabbit. <laughs> well, actually, you could, you could. I, I now suddenly I was just seeing a duck before, but now I'm actually seeing a rabbit. Yeah. I, 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 I get to. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. Okay. I have to go back now. So. Basically, all of us, uh, you know, our, our visual, our perception is easily, um, is very fickle, you know, even the, even the best of us in terms of who perceive things really well. We can, you know, our visual images, it depends on the angle that we're looking at, it depends on what else. Whether you see a rabbit or a duck, what, what does that mean? What would influence that? Experience. Your experience? Yeah. Uh, yeah, your schema. Also, what you're expecting, if you're expecting to see something. So, perception is, you know, the, the, main, the main point is, is that perception is um, subjective, a lot. So, uh, you can then, you can imagine that if you have somebody who's perception is skewed to begin with, uh, then things are going to look different than many of us. They're going to see things or not see things that the rest of us do. And that's going to have implications. I'm trying to think if there's anything else these things look like. Um, you remember there was a period of time when, when there were you know there were lots of photograph lots of pictures of like these dots and every, the whole field was just all these colored dots and if you stared at it long enough you could see some sort of an image. Mm -hmm. I stare at those things and think, why can't I see this? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just have a question. So what are you saying? If someone with an abnormal learning disability would see when they look at that versus what we see? That's a good question. I mean, somebody, what do you think? <coughs> In other words, this is kind of, you know, we, 
we can, if you, we're, we're looking at a bunch of little features and making a whole. Yeah, they're more likely to see one little part of it. Well, I see a spot, or, you know, that's, or, or here's a, a, you know, a dagger or something. They're much more likely to notice um, certain details of it, but not necessarily be able to figure, put it into a hole. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's partly what we mean when we say when somebody has difficulty with part-whole relationships, they're likely to focus on details and not the overall shape of, of, of this object. Yes? So then, if the person, how does that relate to comprehension, for example, if a student is picking up details of the story and not the whole? So it does... Yeah, and so therefore, um, therefore, when you when when you when you move into the academic realm, and we're looking at reading comprehension, even though they very likely may be very good at decoding words, but then comprehension is um, maybe they will tend to, to tend to see some very concrete linear things that happen, um, but larger themes, you know, for anything. It's very hard. Inference is much harder. So the inferential, more higher, if higher level uh, kinds of questions and uh, insights uh, are going to be much more difficult. My daughter had that same issue when she went through the Linda Moon Bell program. Mm -hmm. The first time she started it, they'd read a sentence or two, you know, the black squirrel ran across the room and so what color was the squirrel? She couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. By the end of the program, they were reading two paragraphs, and she or three paragraphs, and she was answering all these questions. Yeah. They tried to get her to make Visualize. visual mental pictures in her mind mm -hmm. as she was reading, which she mm -hmm. wasn't doing before. And everybody thought she was comprehending because she was fluently reading. And then when yeah. we had a test, it's like, exactly. you're reading fluently, you're not getting anything. Right. It's hard to diagnose. Exactly. And good. the, the more we do, the more we study comprehension, um, the more we're able to, um, the more we learn we have to do that. We know that good readers, good comprehenders, um, <coughs> see pictures in their head as they're going along. And um, I, I'm a trainer for the Wilson Reading System, which is another program based on <laughs> Uh, Orton, an Orton Gillingham theory like Lillian Bell is. Lillian Wood Bell has this whole visualizing and verbalizing program. Um, in Wilson, we do what we call comprehension SOS, which is uh, stop, orient, support. I do the same thing. If a, we read about a room is a mess, and um, I want the student to tell me exactly what it looks like. What do you see? You know, and really help them to, um, again, over and over and over again, to help them go beyond just reading it's a mess, to actually, you know, seeing a richer kind of um, scene that they can, you know, see and so on. And that, that, that kind of um, comprehension support is really helpful for, so your daughters, um, very fortunate to have that. And we'll get past your and mouse again. Okay. Now, um, social skills is, so we talked about executive function and visual spatial processing. That forms, you know, the core of the issues with nonverbal learning disabilities. This can play out, though, it will have an impact on social skills and academics as well, um, and in varying degrees, again, because this is a dimensional uh, syndrome. Some people have it to a certain extent, other people have it to a greater extent. So um, diff when you have, if you're not visually uh, acute, then nonverbal communication is going to be more difficult for you. 
And what do we do? What kinds of not, what do we mean by nonverbal communication? What are what are issues? What are some things that we like body language? Body language. In other words, you know, if the teacher is standing there like this, you know, looking really angry and mean and things. Um, that, t that sends a message to students, but if you don't see that, you don't know that, you know, she wants you to sit down and be quiet and so on, um, unless she tells you. Then,